Hello everybody. Hope you're doing good today. Hope it's a blessed day for you. It's been a while since I was on here. I had some technical issues. I had to buy a new webcam and then a microphone. Then I couldn't get them to sync up and had to call in some help to get this figured out. So hopefully you'll be able to hear the lesson and uh, see the lesson at the same time. Alright, our lesson today is going to be <clears throat> the parable of the... Uh, the wise and foolish builders. <clears throat> okay, we remember that parables are stories that teach lessons and truths. These stories are told in a way to explain something of a spiritual nature in a physical way. And Jesus taught the people by parables. And uh, so that's what he did. And we have just as much to learn from these parables as those people who heard them from Jesus. And yes, technically, we have a better understanding now that we're on this side of the cross and we are in the kingdom. So, so we know that. All right. To read the parable is four verses. That's all it is. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, the wind blew, and burst against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and burst against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall." Now we'll notice the storm that attacked them was the same. It was identical. I mean, so, I mean, there, there, there's these two builders and the same storm comes through and one survives and one does not. We know that Jesus delivered one of the greatest sermons ever preached. I mean, this is recorded for us in, in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And so... That it, so that he could be more readily seen and heard, the sermon was delivered from a mountain and to his disciples that had gathered to hear a message. And it has been descriptively referred to as a sermon on the mount. And yes, we have this. Jesus gave the parable of the wise and foolish builders at the close of this great lesson for mankind. And so if we start thinking about that, that's probably the first parable that we have. All right, it tells us not only the importance of hearing or reading his words, but the necessity of being obedient to his teaching in order to receive eternal salvation offered by God through his Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There will be many on Judgment Day that will profess to have heard the gospel of Christ and believe Jesus to be the Savior, the Son of God, but are lacking in obedience. And they heard God's will in the message of Christ, but did not do it. But sadly, they've been deceived into thinking that they're still saved. And so there's millions in this condition. They think they're going to heaven, but they're not. <clears throat> All right. So what happened? Immediately before this parable, of course, we have the famous words of Matthew 7, 21 through 23, where uh, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven. Then several say, But did we not do this and do that in your name? And Jesus will say in verse 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So in this lesson, the parable of the wise and foolish builders is used to teach this truth from God's word. And it's a lesson that we need to know. All right, let's look first at the wise builder because that's what Jesus did. See, a wise man is one that is prudent and exercises good judgment in all that he does. I mean, he is well informed, having a broad range of knowledge, experience, and understanding. And given the task of building a house for himself, how would the wise, prudent man respond? Well, no doubt he would choose a floor plan having sufficient space to accommodate his needs and the needs of his family. And likewise, he would select quality building materials suitable for the type of house he was building and having long life expectancy. 
and he would be assured that all beams, columns, joists, rafters, and walls would have engineering specs that would support the structure. And finally, he would search for a suitable building site. Ideally, it would be in a neighborhood in the vicinity he wanted to reside. And so he would test the ground and find just underneath a layer of soil, underneath the layer of soil, a solid rock. And so the wise builder would be well pleased knowing that his new house would be constructed on a firm foundation. And the test came soon after his home was completed. A storm brought torrential rains, floods, and winds. The house passed the test. It withstood the elements. It was built on a firm foundation. See, the wise man heard the word of God. The wise man obeyed the word of God. The wise man chose a proper foundation on Christ and the apostles' doctrine. The wise man dedicated his life to serving God, and the wise man continued to learn from God and did what God commanded. And even the storms of life would not mess him up and upend him. Now let's look at the foolish builder. <clears throat> you know, a foolish man is one having little or no good judgment as he conducts his everyday life. We might say, well, maybe in, in the life race, he might be wise and have things figured out. But in the spiritual race, no, he doesn't. So he makes unwise, imprudent decisions for his life. And given the same task of building a house for himself, how would he respond? Well, the selection of his floor plan, the quality of his building materials, and the soundness of his engineering design would all be doubtful and given little attention. And even if his planning were passable, what would happen if he gave little consideration about the site selection? You know, if he chooses a home site based only on its convenient location, <coughs> excuse me, he may make a foolish choice. Now, suppose he ignored the fact that the base of the site on which he built his house was sand, and he completed his new home on that foundation, it too would soon be tested by that same storm. So the rains, the floods, the violent winds would test it, and regardless of how well constructed the house was, the foundation would fail and give way because it was sand, and the house would fail the test. It could not withstand the elements because it was built on an unstable, shifting foundation of sand. You know, sometimes we see this when we watch videos of floods taking place, and all of a sudden you see a house floating down the river. Well, the house was constructed very well because it still held together, but apparently the foundation it was on was not solid enough to support it. And, and so we see that happen all the time. So the foolish man heard the word of God. The foolish man did several things. Actually, he didn't do anything. He did not obey the word of God. He did what he wanted to do in his worship to God. He added to the word of God or he took away from the word of God. He acted foolishly. And in, in essence, he rejected God by basically declaring, I don't care what God says, I'm going to do it my way. And so that is pure foolishness. That's no different than the one that says there is no God, Psalm chapter 14. And so when we look at some self-examination from this lesson, uh, think about this. Which home would you trust to protect your physical life and the life of your family? Well, no doubt it would be the one built on a solid foundation capable of withstanding the elements of nature. And so, but we ask the question, how safe is your spiritual life? On what foundation does it stand? And that's really what we need to focus upon in life is our spiritual aspects. And so the wise man heard the word of God and so did the foolish man. I mean, they both heard the word of God as Jesus described it. The wise man obeyed the word of God. The foolish man did not. And so your spiritual house should not be built on hearing the word of God alone, but hearing it and doing it. I mean, hear and understand as Jesus said. And so that's what we're supposed to do and not just be a hearer of the law, but a doer of the law. You know, James 1, 22 through 25 talks about that. 
that doing God's law is better than just knowing God's law. All right, so hearing and obeying the word of God is the solid foundation on which we should build our spiritual home. And so assuredly, it will be tested by the temptations, trials, and tribulations of life, but it will stand if we have the proper foundation. If we don't, then it's just going to wither away, just like the parable of the soils talked about, the one that fell among the rocks. I mean, it quickly sprouted, but there was no foundation to, for the roots to hold on to, and so they dried up in the heat and blew away in the wind. So... By this, Jesus says, we should learn from the parable of the wise and foolish builders. And that's what we should do. We should learn from them. Just like every parable of Jesus, we should learn from each and every one of them. And if you're not really sure what a parable means, then start studying, start looking at it, and start reading some uh, different versions to get a different take on it, and maybe look up some uh, commentaries on this. And there's, there's lots of information you can find on the internet also. You can type in the, the parable Wise and Foolish Builders and probably find a hundred or more articles on it by different people. Just look at the various takes that people have. Uh, and, and so that, that's, what you, that's how you learn. I mean, just seeking, seek the knowledge. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. Isaiah 55 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And so we should be doing that. Uh, I mean, we should be doing that every day of our lives. And so we want to have that proper wise foundation that the wise man found and not the one that the foolish man tried to act upon. So think about these things. All right. You notice I'm not wearing my glasses. I'm having eye trouble, but... I have surgery planned for uh, Monday, so hopefully uh, my eyesight is going to be a lot better after that. But anyway, uh, you have a good day. I mean, this is a day that you can do something for God. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day, so go and serve the Lord and uh, worship Him and assemble with the saints and give them encouragement. So consider all these things, and Lord willing, we'll be back with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.